Hey guys, welcome back to Primetime Studios. Like always, I'm your host, Primetime Phil, and today we're going to do a little bit mock draft. And the reason why we're going to do another mock draft is because the things in the NFL draft have just changed. I mean, you have the NFL Combine coming and, and people putting ridiculous numbers like a defensive tackle from Georgia, Jordan Davis, that was in our radar, but now is definitely there. And it's just a guy that, as much as we want, is kind of just unrealistic now with the numbers that he put up with being at 340 pounds. So seeing that, I definitely recommend that you watch that video because, man, was that big guy moving. Uh, but to get a guy like that would be amazing, but I don't think he's going to be there at the 24th pick. And now guys like Zion Johnson that we could have easily picked probably in that second round if we tried to trade it down, is not even getting hardly past that first round. So people have changed. You know, PFF's focus on what people can bring to your team has all changed. So I want to redo the NFL draft in this new mock. And I also want to show that they give grades now. And not only do they give the grades, and they don't show, hey, you know, you pick this guy, you get a D for that. No, they pick... You pick this guy at this particular spot. I mean, you could be at five picks away and you can get a B because you didn't pick him at that fifth spot down and you didn't trade down to get him. So to get an amazing grade, you would really have to pick what they want at that particular spot. So it's going to be really hard to get A's all the way across the board, but we're going to definitely give it a shot. And I want to do maybe follow up to two more mock drafts because I want to do offense and a defense. So three mock drafts total. So let's get started with our first mock draft. So here we are, PFF. They kind of changed a little bit of the format, but I'm going to kind of box it in a little bit so you guys get a better view. And I'm going to slow it down just a bit just so we can talk about some of the free agency. You got Linnell Collins there, uh, Lyle Collins, sorry. You got D-Law, you got Cooper. So some of the stuff I'm going to talk about, so we'll slow it down just a bit. Um, you guys are more than welcome to fast forward, which I know you guys will. Um, but let's talk about this stuff. Let's enter the NFL draft. Let's get this Cowboys draft future going because some of these ones are, are kind of iffy. So let's start the draft. Um, we're going to go ahead and get Jacksonville on the clock. They're going to hit Hutchinson. Um, and we, honestly, at this point, we need to start looking offensive linemen as much as we want to look defensive linemen. But there are, of course, defensive guys on this board that are always the exceptions to the rules. You have Dean, you have Lloyd, and of course, Davis that we were talking about that was just running ridiculous numbers um i think that's going to be a huge one i mean jordan davis sitting right there run 340 pounder running crazy like four seven speeds i mean that, that's a big guy that can get down the field now is he a guy that can honestly not be stopped by the offensive line yeah he's one of those guys too so he did not play a whole lot of snaps in georgia and i think that's what concerns some people but really nfl that just means to me that he doesn't have a whole lot of wear and tear on the body and when he was in there he was very effective so as we look further down we scroll down you're going to see zion johnson here as well which is not surprising that his stock has moved up after that combine which a lot of these guys are going to happen so who would we pick now last time when i did the first mock draft i picked zion johnson because i did a couple of trading arounds and but obviously when i had green i was really focused on getting that offensive line guy and honestly if it was me in the nfl draft now i would probably do that but this one we're going to change it up we're going to go defensive tackle jordan davis we're going to get our big guy right now and and i definitely recommend some of the film because man i'm going to put some up right we're here so you can see how fast he's going like crazy um but let's go ahead and pick Jordan Davis. Let's get our defensive end. Let's help stop that middle uh, of our running defense that was just terrible last year. So as it goes through, let's talk about guys like D-Law not taking a pay cut. I mean, that is a huge thing. I, I would say restructure, but you're pushing that can down the road and or you're kicking the can down the road and it just gets into really bad money later on. Uh, but where do you have the replacement on this defense? If you're not going to replace them with Gregory at least bring Gregory back, then what, what are you doing? I mean, if you you release him, you save about $9 million on the cap, but can you give that $9 million to Gregory? Well, you can give some of it, but you're going to have to give him a little bit more. And can he replace uh, what Law gives you? And yes, Law doesn't give you a whole lot of production. I think that's the part that it's easy to make that argument that, yeah, he could, but does he have that leadership? Does he have that pressure, the run stopping? That's the stuff that D-Law definitely does bring. So as we look on our other side, you know what? I'm looking at these guys, and I'm seeing, you know, of course you got you got Nick Bonito, 
uh, that guy is just a rush. And honestly, if you are getting rid of a guy like Gregory, he would be a great guy to put back in there. So that's the guy that I'm going to possibly pick. And guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to put two defensive guys, and I'm going to push our offensive line needs to the back burner. And <laughs> that's going to scare some people and piss some other people off. So, but one pick that I do like is uh, Slayer. Uh, Sawyer there. Sorry, man. Wow, that was just a little slip. But um, the tackle, you know, most likely going to move inside to guard. But what a great pickup that would be at that 56 spot. Um, they would grade it really badly. But I'm going to go Nick because, man, we need to replace Gregory because things are not looking good right now. Um, we haven't done really any offensive, offensive moves other than, what, Noah Brown? And the defense is where our focus needs to kind of continue to stay, even though, you know, hey, we need to fix that offensive line. Well, offensive line wide receivers those are things are obvious uh those are almost things that are needed every year except for those years that we did have it started but even those years we still packed the house with malik turner and stuff like that and that's why you saw malik turner more on the sideline even though he was an amazing wide receiver people are like well we should bring him back well what are the odds that he's gonna want to come back uh when he had you know we we were there and he we didn't use him you know correctly now thinning out the wide receiver Maybe that'll tempt him a little bit, saying that, you know, he's going to be able to come in. Now, as we look here, I'm going to probably go ahead and pick our offensive lineman um, now. Uh, that way we can get a good offensive lineman, something that we can definitely plug in. When you're looking at a guy like Kellen here, I know I picked him up in previous drafts, but he's too good of a tackle to be sitting there and not to grab him. Um, you also have guys like Max Mitchell. Max Mitchell, a big guy, you know, plays at a smaller school, so people don't give him a lot of credit for the competition that he's gone, but a guy that can come into his own. So he's definitely a project, but do you need a project guy now, or do you got, need a guy that you can plug in with the size? Now, let's look at Max's size. I think that's that's the thing that's going to separate him with a lot of people. He's 6'6". Um, and let's see, Mitchell has the highest grade tackle of all college football. He earned... A 94.8 overall grade while playing right tackle um, and allowed only 13 pressures. And again, again, a law small school. So a lot of people are going to kind of take that away from him. Um, that's actually very tempting. Now, when we look up here also to Arizona's, he's got a highest grade of the power five tackles. So his recruiting is up there with about four. And what was, uh, what was Mitchell? He was sitting there. Man, they didn't even grade him. <laughs> You're definitely getting a possible project guy here. So they don't even want to get the things. So, man, how old is it? Six, seven, 300. Oh, man, I am going to actually pick Max Mitchell. I'm going to, you know what? Ah. <laughs> uh, I would pick Max Mitchell just in the sense that of the potential that he has. Um, so let's let's go ahead and pick him. Let's 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 change it up, man. Kellen was last time. So I want to try to change who I'm picking this time. But when it comes to offense and defense, man, no holes bars. I am picking people that I have previously picked because obviously you start to get those favorites. And I'm just setting myself for heartbreak later down the road. Let's be honest with you, man. Uh, but one thing that I'm very happy about was on Sundays, I have been doing a recent podcast, uh, video, whatever stream that you want to call it. With Mark Holmes, we talked about Cowboys. Last time was really a therapy session of just what was stressing. Mark kind of feeds that and uh, on his channel. So it, it's amazing to do that on Sundays. And I'm hoping that he continues it. Uh, something that he wants to do every Sunday. So with the NFL draft coming up, I'm hoping to do a live uh, day there. Um, so I'll probably team up in there and try to figure out some stuff. Um, but let's go ahead and look. We got a quarterback sitting right there, man. Do you take a quarterback? You take a defensive, another defensive end? Uh, do we trade back? I think we might want to trade back, but we got no trade people. Um, you got a cornerback. Man, see, and this is a problem with your character coming right here. Is that by the time you pick into this round, the fourth or so, um, that's when you start to get thinned out. So, to me, I would like to see what receivers they have. We definitely need to start replacing some of these guys. And we got 5'11, but it's not going to be like this. So you got 5'11. Man, if it was, if I didn't know any better, man, I would say the people before me did the exact same thing. So let's go ahead and uh, let's kind of cancel that out. And I'm going to switch it up again. I'm going to go ahead and get another defensive lineman, man. You guys are going to kill me. 
our offense is going to suck next year because Dak is going to be on his back and uh, I'm not getting him any kind of protection. Uh, so let's see what we can get later on. And I'm hoping that our guys can do a nice free agency here because uh, I really want defense, man. I really want our defense to kind of stop people. Uh, our offense to me, like, when you take this type of strategy for defense, honestly, you're looking at the fact that your offense struggled in general. Even when I had an amazing offense that was so high powered, the defense was what was having to bail out this offense. So should we put more of the pieces on the defense to bail out this offense? I'm for this on this draft because you didn't have anybody. If you don't pick them early, it's going to be hard for them to be there later on. And that's going to be the strategy that Dallas is going to have to come across. A lot of people are going to want to pick those wide receivers or whatever to kind of uh, to kind of start getting those more weapons for Dak Prescott, but if you don't keep him up with some of those higher draft picks, I mean it's going to be really hard. Um, here, I think, man, anything we pick here, honestly, is going to be either need or it's going to be something that is just the best player that we think at a position. I mean, and by that point, you're going to start to see these grades start to drop because right now I want to pick a running back i want to pick a tight end so as i look over here we're going to pick our tight end you know this is a good round to pick him I'm, even though we put the franchise tag on schultz which i think is a terrible idea but if you're putting the franchise tag on schultz just to pick a tight end later on to groom him and then you're obviously putting schultz on a long-term deal so his contract is more like five to six million then it's okay but pick getting him at 11 million dollars is definitely not going to be great um, now, will they utilize him as that way? Yes, I, I, I seriously think they will utilize him because you saw how they were utilizing him when uh, Jarwin went out and with Jarwin having his hip thing, I would, wouldn't count too much on him. So we're going to go ahead and pick uh, a good, nice, big tight end. Um, and we're not going to pick the same tight end. I'm, I'm tired of picking the same exact tight end. Even though if Dallas did pick him, I would be excited. So um, we all know Cole Turner is that guy for me. So Dallas coming up right now. Um, we're gonna on the next mock draft. Don't worry, man. I'm gonna speed it up. We're going to uh, we're gonna do seven rounds, but I'm gonna do real quick. And of course, these guys at the end they start to become uh, some really weird names here. Uh, so as I'm going to, I'm going to actually ch change it up, and I'm going to go Devonte Price. And you know why I'm gonna go Devonte Price? Because uh, he is a bigger running back. Um, I do like Pierre Strong. He's he, but he's a little bit smaller. So I'm going to go Devontae Price because I am going to go ahead and start to think about the replacement for Ezekiel that next year when the salary cap allows us to release him or get rid of him. Um, so watch that for the next move uh, for the next season. Um, anytime these guys sign extensions, you have to look automatically when does the dead money you know, kick in? When does the contract allow you to let go of a player and, and not have a lot of dead money? And dead money is obviously money that you're paying saying that you're going to guarantee a contract, stuff like that. Um, so you have to pay stuff. You can't just take that contract, you know, pay him all this money or say you're going to pay him all this money and then turn around and trade him because then you're still going to pay money with him on a different team, you see? So that's why when people are saying, well, we need to trade this person and we need to get... You know, that's just uh, a lot of crazy talk. Um, and I'm going to go safety here. We're going to in defense, man. Um, this is getting kind of crazy with this defense and stuff. So what I'm going to do is we're going to get this go play out. We're going to speed this up. Oh, yeah, let's just push it past. Um, and now I'm going to redo the mock draft, but I'm going to do pure offense. The next one I'm going to do is pure defense. And But you can almost call this my pure defense one, but... We did get a guard in there, um, or a guy that we're gonna transition into a guard. But look at this, man. So the first ones, we get Jordan Davis here with an A, of course. Man, they, they even can't hate on that one. Nick here, we're gonna solidify that offense, that, you know, that line there, the defensive line, sorry. You're about to call me out on that. Max Mitchell, A minus. They don't know that I'm gonna put him in at guard uh, for the meantime until I can kick him back out to tackle, or I just have him doing tackle stuff while you know tyron smith is there and then when he goes out because we know he will he can jump in there now neil farrell there we go look at that a nice backup defensive tackle for when jordan davis does come off the field which i'm going to train him never to come off that field um here we go grant this is the tight end that i'm talking about i just reached for a tight end because we needed a tight end and look they gave us a c plus Devonte price man the replacement zeke replacement 
B plus, and then Marcus Bell. Uh, hey, man, I'm surprised, honestly surprised by that. But again, it has a lot to do with the type of player at the position that you drafted him at. And he's a really good player. In a lot of other draft boards, he's jumping in that fourth and fifth round. So the fact that he dropped to us all the way to the sixth is a good thing for us. So let's go ahead and restart this baby ump. And we're going to go ahead and do, again, I think I'm going to drop it down to five this time. And so we're going to do five rounds of offense, defense kind of thing. So let's try to focus on offense and see what happens here. All right. So we're going to slow it down just a little bit so we can kind of see what's going on. I don't want to take up all your guys' time. And I don't want you guys having to skip forward too much because I know, again, that's something I would do. So offensive draft we got tyler lindenbaum i mean i swear guys i did not edit this at all so as an offensive draft since i am entitled i am going to pick tyler lindenbaum so good thing this was not my defensive draft otherwise i would have cried a little bit inside um even though this was the mock draft i would have mocked cried so um but anyways let's go offense again let's not look at these linebackers that are sitting here all pretty waiting for you to pick him we're gonna go maybe Jalen Tolbert wide receiver yes yes I like in that now do we go ahead and maybe pick another lineman you know we can get an alignment later on we can get our uh maybe uh Hayes in the third round so let's get our wide receiver we're gonna get Jalen Tolbert here uh he stands six foot three Tolbert is one of the best big play threats in college football his 16 deep receptions was a college uh in his conference obviously uh college high so um he is a deep threat now they put him here as a two recruit because honestly what has he done other than the deep threat can you teach him other stuff now sitting at six foot three 190 pounds bigger dude but not bigger in the sense of you know weighing a lot to where he you know gonna be weighed down so it looks like he has the ability to kind of do so we're gonna go ahead and pick Jalen Tol tolbert as our wide receiver here okay now, maybe in the next round, I think, as we, we quickly go through here, I maybe want to pick up our guard, or guard for our left guard spot that we have open. Now, you could always put Tyler Biotish over there. But, I mean, we're sitting here. Let's see, who do we have? We got Marquise Hayes right there. That's what I was talking about. But he's sitting there at the... Okay, Marcus Jones... Okay, I just saw him. Sorry, guys. Uh, 115. So in order to go, I would really have to honestly move back to about 100 or so. So let's look trade back. They got 118. So really, the 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 pick that I want to kind of pick that that pick at is let's say about 95. So I'm gonna offer that. Now they have a lopsided whole thing, and this is awesome. The veto trade. So now you're not blind in the dark. I could tell them that look, man, I want your 95th, your 133 and your 170 but nope we'll say 208 and 240 no, we'll take them all and they don't want to do that so let's take off these last two and let's take off this one that's going to shoot up big time let's take your seventh next year and your six Man, they do not want to do that all right there it is now i traded back and my trade back was not because you know hey i want to get more draft picks my trade back was because i want to pick somebody but i want to pick him at the right spot you know who had that strategy jimmy johnson jimmy johnson didn't just pick a guy at a spot he would trade at a certain particular spot and pick him there not only for salary cap reasons but you know not very much salary cap back then but it was to you know get the best possible grade for him really and who was grading him then but yeah but he did an amazing job at it as we as we jump back look at that Marquise Hayes is right here we're going to go ahead and pick him at 95 okay uh, a little bit earlier than what they're showing there so you know maybe we're going to get a B for that but it's a guy that we can put in our offensive line in the left guard spot and we wouldn't really have to worry too much about him um <clears throat> now as we look again we're going to look offense Maybe this time, no, no, see, there's our better tight end. And what do we get for him? Like a C? So how about we go ahead and we get our backup quarterback in Bailey Zeppi. Now, Zeppi broke the record for passing yards and passing touchdowns in a single season during his only FBS play. The NFL was quite the steep transition, though, 
as if he is under pressure with just 12% of his drop pass last year. So again, a guy that's a project guy, but when we're sitting here picking around the fourth round, I mean, wasn't Dak Prescott a project guy? He wasn't really a guy that we wanted, but a guy that we ended up getting, and that, that just kind of shows how that destined that was. Um, so do we go ahead and pick a tackle? You know, picking just offense kind of changes things. You don't you don't get that, you know, sweet, sweet person. But, you know, you got your running back here. But I think we're going to go ahead and pick our quarterback. We're going to pick a quarterback for a possible backup. You know, I want some battling. You know, I don't want the backup just to be up for grabs. Honestly, I don't even want the starting job to be up for grabs. I want some pressure on Dak Prescott. Um, but let's look at this. Here we go. We go offense again. And we're going to possibly have to trade out of this. But we got three picks, so I don't know how much trading off. off of. We're going to go ahead and pick a running back. Um, of course, of course, we got to get no matter what. I think Dallas needs to pick that running back at some point in this draft. Just like a quarterback would be amazing. A kicker would be amazing. Um, now, my question to you. Now, we're doing offense defense. Now, if I, you know, draft a punter. Is that considered offense and defense? I mean, is it defense because I'm pinning him and field goal kicker is offense? I mean, can I do that? Uh, I mean, now that's pretty cheap, but uh, let's see. We're gonna go, we're gonna go Jalen Woods. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go tight end from Virginia. We're gonna change this stuff, man. We're just gonna do some stuff. This is honestly guys that I really don't know of. I've done a lot of film. I've been watching a lot of guys, but once you get back into these later parts of this draft, it's harder to keep up. Um, now, you got other ones like the NFL Draft Network one. I love that one. The only problem was they were just having problems um, in general with their um, with their site. So you know, what I, I got to pick up. He's been sitting there for a while. And he's, you know, the tackle. So here we go. Our offense, let's look and see. They're not going to give us the greatest scores because we're picking people out of spots. Instead of just picking the best players available, this is what's going to be looking like. So Tyler and Bomb, of course, A+. Plus. I mean, come on. Get into over at C. We traded back. We got a B for that, so that wasn't too bad, even though we could have got more. Marquise Hayes, you know, great pickup. Bad positioning of where I picked him up at, okay? So Zeppi, they liked where I picked him. White, not so happy. Woods, not so happy about that. And of course, Zach Thomas, um, or Zach Thomas, sorry. Um, now, uh, this is your offensive draft. I mean, not not the greatest in the world. And it, you know, and if you just put offense, it's not going to be the prettiest thing, especially with other people picking it. But if you go just defense, I think that would make you feel a little bit uh, a little bit better about the draft. Just like last year, we got some amazing studs, and you felt great about that draft. And they really rebuilt that draft, especially when you had a guy like Dan Quinn. Kind of saying, hey, we should get that guy. We should get that old guy. Well, how about that guy? And and so, you know, oh. Defensive draft. So let's see. We're going to, I'm sorry. We're going to go back to the first draft. We're going to go ahead and pick the defensive end, Jordan Davis. For our defensive draft. We're going to go ahead and continue this. We're going to get it fast in here, guys. Because I'm going to go ahead and put this up for you. So defensive draft. Do we go ahead and, yes, yes, I am. I'm going to pick our defensive end. I'm going to do it again. I don't care because... You need the best players there in those positions. And Nick, honestly, is one of the better ends in this draft. And if you can get them both, man, that would solidify defense. Now, right here, I want to automatically pick my linebacker. But is there another linebacker sitting there? Um, sorry, I'm getting all excited. I'm really liking how this draft is going. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and pick the linebacker. We're going to go ahead and pick Beavers. Beavers has shorter arms. You know, that wrapping up tackling, but dude, can he hit, man? He has really good speed. He's he can go downhill. He he's I, I like him as a linebacker. You know, the only knock on him he has shorter arms. Who cares? Uh, Zach Thomas type of guy, I guess, in that sense. Um, so let's look at defense here. We got Christian Watson. Uh, you got the defensive end there, but I think I was thinking corner, maybe safety. Maybe that safety later on will be a good pick. The Combine King is more than just a high-level test athlete we saw in Indy. He's super flexible, six foot four, two hundred and four pound depth. Six foot four, two oh eight. Man, right there, that is a Dan Quinn type of guy right there. Um he's super flexible, of course. He dropped the drop issues and the ball tracking are a tad concerning. However, as Watson has 16 drops on 120 career catchables. 
So there is a reason why he plays defense is what they're telling you. Now, also from what we can see, that was trouble tracking the ball in the air. Now, what kind of corner are you really honestly picking in the fourth round, but then an Anthony Brown type of guy? Uh, so, you know, do we pick our defensive end and continue? I think so. So that's what we're going to do. I don't want another Anthony Brown, especially if we're not going to get rid of an Anthony Brown. Now, if you're going to put a guy like out there like him to see if he can potentially become better, that's awesome. And Anthony Brown still had his ability to do some amazing things. And, and this guy, this guy is another guy to me, very sneaky, DeMarco Jackson, um, good linebacker, fast linebacker, eh. but, you know, guy that definitely tested well, um, so, you know, his film has, has been pretty well, he just doesn't look all that big when you look at him on film with other guys, uh, so as a defense, you know, man, they really want us to pick a corner right now, um, six foot four, they don't even tell us anything about this, but I'm liking that, um, Let's see. I'm going to go Bell again. You know, we're going to pick these guys. We're going to, you know, these guys are good spot guys and maybe even role players for our team. So, let's see. Jordan Davis, and I told you this. Defense a little bit easier when it comes to these guys because de defense definitely, the offense is going to be where it's going to be picked apart very early in this draft. But Jordan Davis, we got an A. We got Nick Benito, A. Beavers, A. Neil Farrell, A minus. DeMarco Jackson, A plus. Marquise Bell, because if I didn't, if I picked him further down, I would have got an A for that and it would have been a pure A draft, which is a pretty amazing. But honestly, that is my mock draft, guys. Seriously, I appreciate everything. Thank you very, very much for tuning in. Honestly, I appreciate it. I tried to give you a quick mock draft. I was kind of extended it last time because I had a lot to talk about. I tried to shove stuff in there. So if I'm yapping like crazy, I apologize. But I appreciate all the support, guys. I appreciate you guys even just talking and, and telling me what you guys think about the NFL draft, who you guys want, and how I'm wrong about some of these guys. I mean, I'm not 100% right. I'm not in an NFL scouting combine seeing what these guys are doing in real life. So, you know, you can only watch what the internet provides you. So tell me what your opinion are, man. Tell me what I'm wrong about. Tell me what I'm right about. Tell me what you think the Dallas Cowboys are going to do. What is it the other NFL teams are going to do? Our division is definitely shaking up, and I'm really liking it. You got Carson Wentz coming back to the division, and I'm okay with that because I was great at, we were great at whooping Carson's ass, and let's continue that tradition because Dallas Cowboys are all about tradition. So again, guys, I'm Primetime Phil. Thank you for tuning in. I appreciate all your support. Don't forget to always ring that bell.